It's it's uh, it, it's my really pleasant task today to 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 introduce to introduce uh, our keynote speaker, Dr. Muriel Howard, and I have here Muriel the authorized version of your bio from the uh, from the uh, from the Ask You uh, website, and I won't go through all of that. You all can all go to www.askyou.org and uh, go to the president's page. And, and get the information uh, on, on, on Muriel. Uh, Muriel's education is primarily in New York. Uh, she went to ASKU, I guess, what, three years ago now? Uh, as she was always very active in the work of, uh, of ASKU, but she went to, she went to ASKU uh, three years ago from, uh, from Buffalo. Uh, I really started to get to know Muriel when she was my teacher. Uh, ask you, the American Association of State Colleges and Universities, uh, one of its very fine programs is a new president's academy, and Muriel's been on the, on the faculty of that for a number of years. So that's where I first started really getting uh, to know her. And in the five years since, uh, my respect for her has grown uh, steadily, uh, and by steadily, by leaps and, and uh, and bounds. Um, and at this point, I consider both Muriel and her husband Mickey. Mickey's here with us uh, as, as, as my friends. The subject of today's, or this, this conference, is right in Askew's wheelhouse and, uh, and, and that of, of Askew institutions. For example, at Eastern Kentucky University, our three part mission. And you won't hear teaching scholarship and research in our three-part mission. Our three-part mission is student success, regional stewardship, and making of our students informed, critical, and creative thinkers who can communicate. Focus, if you will, on the regional stewardship. It's what ASKU calls stewardship of place. And it is a real focus of ASKU as an organization and of ASKU member institutions to focus on stewardship of place around economic development, around education, around all those places where institutions and their communities, and in the case of Eastern Kentucky University, our region, intersect. Town-gown relations are a key and fundamental part of stewardship of place. So, that's one of the reasons, as an ASKU institution, I was delighted that we had an opportunity to host this conference, and even more delighted uh, that Muriel Howard, the president of the American Association of State Colleges and Universities, uh, agreed to come share with us today some of her perspectives on this topic. So thank you very much, and I give you Dr. Muriel Howard. Good afternoon. Thank you, Doug, so much for that um, wonderful introduction. And it's really great to be here um, in the beautiful Commonwealth of Kentucky and certainly on the campus of Eastern Kentucky um, State University. So thank you for that warm introduction and for talking about Ask You. Basically, my job in Washington, D.C. is to work with 420 colleges and universities on leadership and advocacy. And so tonight, I'm going to miss this wonderful barbecue and that great uh, concert that's going to happen because Senator Reed um, has asked me to come tomorrow morning to talk about affordability uh, before the Senate Working Committee. So um, we were really looking forward to this evening, but we're going to miss that good time with you. Doug, you've done a great job. I mean, some of you may not know, but Eastern <coughs> Kentucky is also his um, alma mater. And I think you've done a wonderful job um, distinguishing this institution, particularly as it relates to um, stewardship of place. And to be able to host this wonderful conference uh, certainly adds to your visibility, not only um, in the international arena, but certainly also um, at ASCU. So we will be featuring um, this work and doing a write-up, and we'll work with your staff on that. 
Uh, because one of the things we do at Ask You is we do what you're doing um, this week, and that is we try and share information and learn from each other. As you all know, our theme for this meeting is Town and Gown Partnerships for the Present and the Future. And this gathering represents a very, very diverse group of institutions and people coming from very diverse communities, whether you're urban, rural, suburban, affluent, economically challenged, whether you're from a red state, a blue state, or a swing state, or North American, South American, European, Asian, or the Pacific Rim, welcome to all of you. But whatever the specifics of our place or our circumstances, every institution represented here seeks to be a model of campus community engagement. And it is through your efforts bringing together civic leaders, university officials, faculty, staff, students, neighborhood residents, to collaborate on common services, programs, academic research, and citizen issues ways of creating an improved quality of life for all that are involved for the present and the future, I want to commend you for your commitment. I expect at this moment, or at least I hope, some of you still have a general vision of the level of engagement that you're sharing in terms of what's going on at your campus and that it will come to mind during my talk. Perhaps this mental picture is dominated by a triumphant collaboration culminating in handshaking, television cameras, and possibly congratulations all around. For this conference is brimming over with many wonderful and useful sessions on how to navigate a huge variety of town gown and planning issues. But I'd like to take a moment to focus instead on the philosophy that underlies the town gown discussion. Why is this so important and why are we here at all? Or to be specific, why should the town-gown relationship exert such a priority, especially in such financially challenging times? In the old cliche, the academy is an ivory tower, aloof from its community, an entity unto itself. Certainly, we don't think of ourselves in that way. Read our mission statements. Openness is the very essence of our being. Ask anybody. We are the campuses of the people, by the people, and for the people. And that's us, and that's what we believe it asks you. But yet, when we ask the question directly, is your institution closely linked to your community, research studies indicate that about half of our colleges and universities will say no, that they are not. And so I would think, gee, are we being too hard on ourselves? We can't possibly be skimming the best and the brightest off the top without ever looking back at the communities from which they come. In that model, the academy is kind of a fortress positioned to rescue students from the community, not a partner intended to be an integrated part of it. What is exciting about this conference is that in reality, we are all engaged at various levels and in various ways and have come here to share. Some of you have ongoing initiatives to integrate refugees into American life and into economic stability while respecting their culture. There are community orchestras and farmers markets located on campuses. There are urban planning initiatives attended by local mayors and members of Congress. And so as we try and strike the appropriate balance it is a comfort to remind ourselves that the choices we face is not between a tower of ivory and a pillar of salt. Because we are not in biblical times, I believe it is safe to look back at the town. Even the term ivory tower sounds like something from a fairy tale, doesn't it? And if some lucky prince manages to scale the walls of the academy, we'll give him an education. We'll make him solve a few riddles. We'll make him endure a few tests. But in the end, he'll win his prize. And after that, we'll send him back to the town. I believe that we continue to learn from stories we read as children. As children, we learn the rhyme of certain troops. But it is only as adults that we understand the reason. 
Aldous Huxley wrote that the genius of life is to carry the spirit of childhood into old age. And you know, there is a rhyme I remember from the early years of my education. It's about an old lady who swallows a fly. She does this in a very deliberate yet securitous way. Everyone knows that the best way to swallow a fly is by accident. This old lady, however, first swallows a cow to catch a goat, to catch a dog, to catch a cat, to catch a bird, to catch a spider that wiggles and jiggles and tickles inside of her. She follows the spider to catch the fly. Now, we never really learn why she swallows the fly. In fact, her character was rather underdeveloped in the poem. But we are explicitly warned at every point that the old lady might die as a consequence of the choice she makes. In fact, we know when she swallows a horse, she's gone too far. As children, I don't think we quite appreciated the significance of that. We all work in higher education. So I ask you, is there a teenage undergraduate in the world who understands that it all comes to an end? Not only do we die, but somewhere along the line, we're supposed to give meaning to the life we have lived. The realization characterizes responsible adult citizenship. Too often, however, I think we get stalled somewhere between the rhyme and the reason, even in the academy. I was lucky to have gone to college in the 1960s, that is the late 1960s, <laughs> when the idea of community service permeated the entire society. I was a sociology major, and I can remember one of my professors sending us out into Manhattan's East Village to interview business owners. I'll never forget it. The project got us outside of the classroom and not and out into the real world and out into the community. We ended up with an ethnographic study. So in the late 1960s, theories in class translated into real life experiences. From my family, I learned ethics, standards, and the golden rule. At college, I learned civic responsibility. At that time, I remember consciously making a commitment to always be involved in urban issues, in the lives of people, in the lives of women especially, and in my community, no matter where I lived. I learned that each of us has many opportunities to make a difference. I learned the philosophy best stated by Marion Wright Edelman that service is the rent we pay for living on Earth. Those learning experiences as a college student were the model for all my subsequent involvement and served as a very important philosophical foundation for my leadership as a college president and now at ASCU. Here I am again today, full circle, talking again about community service and engagement. Which brings me to something else one learns only as an adult, that everything in life is interconnected. A university is interconnected to neighborhoods, which is connected to a city, which is connected to a state, which is connected to other nations, which are connected to other neighborhoods and to people we may never meet. And so a light that's turned on in eastern Kentucky can eventually shine in Washington, in Toronto, in Beijing, or in Rwanda. Years ago, one of my dear friends and supporters of the college where I was president died. He was 95 years old. George had built a television station in our town in about 1953. He was a great supporter of the college, the arts, and the community. Shortly before his death, he made headlines by selling one of his Van Goghs to support cultural institutions in Buffalo. Yes, I said one of his Van Goghs. Late in life, when George was asked what inspired him to build the television station, why he took it upon himself to bring our region into the age of telecommunications, he answered, to make money. Is there anything wrong with that? Well, I ask you, is there anything wrong with that? 
While George's obituary emphasized his community service over his money and philanthropy and the many town gown partnerships he had shepherded along with others, the secret of his success was that he brought meaning to his life and value to his money. Money is a means, but it only gains meaning in the way we use it. Semioticians tell us that nothing holds innate meaning. All meaning is assigned by us. Or as Shakespeare reminds us in Hamlet, there is nothing either good or bad, but thinking makes it so. So between the rhyme and the reason, there is thought. And so we can ask ourselves the big questions. What is the meaning of money? What is the meaning of life? What is the meaning of a sunset? What is the meaning of a pierced tongue? What is the meaning of higher education? To many of our students, higher education is now a means to an end. Just as a horse can be the complicated avenue to a fly, a diploma is the complicated avenue to a career. And a television can be a complicated avenue to regional stability and growth. At ASCU, as you heard from our president, Whitlock, our mantra is that we must be stewards of place. Our campuses have in common the desire to inspire our students to enrich the world. We aspire to leave a community that can sustain itself across time. This is the meaning of higher education. For the truth is, the students who are enrolled in our campuses will someday leave us and they will become members of communities across the planet. Therefore, we must make certain that community engagement is at the heart of everything we do so that they have the knowledge, the skills, the values, and the motivation to support and advocate for a quality of life in the communities they will join. So often, we organize the meaning of higher education according to the familiar tripartite mission of teaching, research, and service. Too often, however, I think service straggles behind. Because if you think about it, teaching and service need to be a kind of service. There are differences, and unlike our mission to teach, Service cannot be contained in an academic calendar. Its goals do not begin with semesters and end with graduation. Sometimes we get no publication from it or even credit for it. Our work in public service does not culminate with a photo op. Often, after projects come to fruition, the academy ends up thanking and congratulating people in the community for work we have done ourselves. For without them, however, it's likely that it would not have been possible. So no teaching, research, and service are not competing agendas. We understand our obligation to serve the community and to be engaged. If students in your community never finish high school, they can't very well enroll in your college or university. If families, if families visiting your campus don't want to enroll their children because the neighborhood is run down, the need for engagement is obvious. If your campus is the only cultural resource in your rural community, the need for engagement is obvious. But community engagement does not address our immediate circumstances always. Currently, ASCU is engaged in helping rebuild the university in Liberia, where more than a decade of civil war has devastated the nation, and 85% of the population lives in poverty. In such an environment, the need to rebuild a university is not immediately obvious to everyone. The immediate future of that nation lies in the ability to feed the Liberian population right now. But in the future of Liberia also lies in the ability of Liberians to access higher education tomorrow and to ensure that future generations will not leave, live in hunger. 
The president of that country understands that. She will visit with Askew again next week to try and encourage us to have more American campuses to help her understand her nation's plight and to build a strong university. Now, I've given a dire example maybe to some of you, but we all have experience with competing priorities. And so what are the challenges we face? What are the challenges you face on your campus? Because we need to talk about them. How do we assert the importance of higher education at a time when resources are diminishing? How do we address the expectation that we educate more students with fewer resources? In such a climate, it is more important than ever to have a strong town-gown relationship. Many problems seem to be problems of the moment. Being a steward of place refers to helping build a strong community that will remain stable across generations and that will endure after we are all gone. For me, a campus is like a fiber in the larger tapestry of the community. The more interwoven you are in that fabric, the more partnerships you have connecting the university and the town. The more your institution will be seen as a resource, as a source of expertise, and as a wise investment. Resources will actually come flooding back to the campus. Think of my friend George. He was not an alumnus. He was an old urban leaguer who came to believe that the college was the most reliable and sustainable hope to bring stability and prosperity to the region. When he died, I was astonished by the generosity with which he remembered our college and his will. So no matter where you are, from Richmond to Monrovia, healthy communities are places where people trust other people. Join organizations, vote, volunteer, socialize with friends, and have opportunities for cultural enrichment. Sounds like a campus, doesn't it? Robert D. Putnam described the correlation between these activities and community health as being as close to perfect as social scientists ever find. The synergy between an engaged college or university and its community can foster a place where children flourish, where babies are born healthy, and where teenagers tend not to become parents, drop out of school, get involved in violent crime, or die prematurely. A college or university can facilitate this, in part because we have the expertise. In part, it is also because we are a microcosm of the larger community itself. And it bears mentioning that increasingly, the community is global. Stability in Liberia will contribute to stability across Africa, which will contribute to stability across the planet, including here in Richmond, Kentucky. Yes, the benefits are reciprocal. An engaged institution generally takes its shape from the community it serves. And this is good, for the alternative is a campus set apart from its community. The alternative is for our local leaders and our local government to see us as irrelevant. Strangers in their midst, and I believe we all deserve better than that. So let's remember, as we engage in the important work of this conference, and as we examine practical avenues to strong town-gown relationships, that the reasons we have convened here in Eastern Kentucky, the reason we have come to share and to learn is to fulfill to the very purpose of higher education, to be good stewards of place, and to give meaning to life itself. Yes, it's as big as all that. This week, thanks to the leadership and generous hospitality of President Whitlock and this entire community, 
we have managed to be stewards of place for the world right here at Eastern Kentucky University. Thank you.